China is among the few countries in the world that operates nuclear-powered attack submarine, or shortly, ISIS-N. The Type 095 submarine is the next generation of Chinese ISIS-N. They are expected by most observers of the Chinese Navy, including in the West, to reach the same level of capabilities as the leading submarine classes in service in the West. The first boat of the Type 095 class is believed to be under construction at the Bohai Huludao shipyard in China's Liaoning province. This conclusion is based on the sighting of new submarine modules with dimensions we haven't seen before. Therefore, it is time to talk about how the Chinese Navy will employ its new class of submarines once they become available. How will Chinese strategists utilize the Type 095 in a potential Western Pacific conflict in a way that maximizes their value? This video tries to answer these questions. The Type 095 is expected by most of the established observers of the Chinese Navy to be of a world-leading standard. They are expected to be as quiet as the latest SSN classes of both the US Navy and the UK Royal Navy, thanks to a number of important advances in Chinese submarine technology in the past decade. Firstly, China has developed a more silent underwater propulsion system, specifically a pump jet, which is generally quieter than a traditional propeller. Secondly, the rafting techniques used to isolate noise have been improved over time on Chinese submarines. The nuclear reactors will benefit from a quieter natural circulation cooling system, which will reduce the noise level of the submarine when in ultra-silent mode. The Type 095 should be very stealthy in that mode. Additionally, the boats will be very heavily armed, exceeding the firepower of all previous Chinese submarine classes, and possibly most of the US submarines in service, although with the exception of the Block 5 Virginia class with its 40 Tomahawk missiles. The Type 095 should have a large VLS vertical launch system capable of rapidly firing a variety of anti-ship and land attack missiles. These two key characteristics of the Type 095, its high stealth and large VLS firepower, will inform the optimal strategy for deploying these submarines in a potential Western Pacific conflict. It is no secret that China sees the United States as the primary military threat in the near future. And likewise, the United States see China in the same light. Chinese naval strategy is therefore focused on how to deter and, if necessary, to defeat U.S. forces in the near seas, should the need ever arise for whatever reason. To understand the potential of the Type 095 in a potential naval war, one must first understand the disposition of US and Allied forces in the Western Pacific. The forward deployed US forces rely on two main lines of defense to prevent Chinese naval forces from breaking out into the open ocean. The first line of defense is referred to as the first island chain, starting from Japan to Okinawa, Taiwan, and the Philippines archipelago. The first island chain is garrisoned by a combination of U.S. air power, warships, and ballistic missile defenses, concentrated in the airbase on Okinawa. They can be reinforced at a moment's notice by the U.S. 7th Fleet headquartered in Yokosuka, Japan. The second line of defense is far sparser in terms of landmass, starting from central Japan to the Marianas Islands, which includes the island base of Guam, and extending ultimately to western New Guinea. The centerpiece of this defense line and indeed of both defense lines, is the bastion of Guam, a U.S.-held island. 
Guam is the linchpin of U.S. power in the Western Pacific. The U.S. military has extensively fortified the island. Around 30% of the island's total land area is covered by military bases. This includes the naval base Guam, home to U.S. submarine units, and is typically defended by Ale Brick destroyers. The Anderson Air Base on the island is a huge Air Force base. It can host the long-range strategic bombers like the B-2, B-52, and in the future, the B-21. In order to defeat U.S. forces in the Western Pacific, the PLA must capture or neutralize Guam. However, geography means that the missiles launched from mainland China towards Guam in the second island chain must overcome the strong defenses located in the first island chain, as well as any ballistic missile defense warships. Those radars and sensors in the first island chain will be able to provide early warning, support continuous tracking of targets, and greatly increase the warning time available for Guam's defenses to successfully target the incoming missiles. The same thing applies to long-range bombers. Because to get within range of Guam to launch their weapons, the bombers would have to fly to within range. Depending on the range of the ordinances, that may be anywhere from 2,000 kilometers or more. This means flying in international airspace and against U.S. and their allies' fighters and surveillance aircraft operating from bases or carriers. They could also be seen by neutral aircraft who may relay information to the U.S. All these factors will provide early warning to Guam, but they can also actively seek to intercept and shoot down Chinese bombers on the way to and on the way back from their launch point. Guam's defenses have been described as an onion, and each layer of the onion must be peeled away to get to the core. This is where the Type 095 submarine comes in. Keep in mind the Type 095 is expected to have a VLS module for launching missiles. So strictly, it should be considered a Nuclear Guided Missile Submarine, or SSGN for short. The great thing about a guided missile submarine is both the ability to bypass the outer defenses and get to the core, and once in position, to launch a large volume of long-range firepower in a short time. The Type 095 can remain on station, undetected, and launch at a moment's notice a considerable amount of vertically launched missiles from their VLS. These may include the YJ-21 anti-ship ballistic missile to destroy naval ships, especially any aircraft carriers found in the vicinity, and any submarines docked in port. The CJ-10 land attack missile will also be used against air bases, especially Anderson Airfield and other military facilities. The juiciest targets will be the planes on the ground, particularly the long-range bombers. In peacetime, to guard against the threat, the U.S. would be forced to invest immense resources to detecting and tracking the potentially very silent Type 095, or risk heavy losses from submarine-launched missiles during potential conflict. In addition to bypassing the defenses in the first island chain, Two other factors make the Type 095's attack especially deadly. The first is that they will be coming from multiple angles in the form of a multi-axis missile attack. You might have a dozen Type 095's split up and dispersed all around Guam. You could have three subs launching their weapons from the north, three from the south, and the remainder divided up between east and west. One disadvantage with attacking from multiple sides is the difficulty in coordinating the missiles so they all arrive at the same time. 
but submarines will generally have a harder time in synchronizing their weapons launch compared to surface warships, owing to the difficulty in discrete communications underwater. The other factor making the Type 095 lethal is the much reduced warning time compared to weapons fired from mainland China, due to the short range at which the submarine weapons are fired. The likely 24-7 presence of the Type 095 around Guam is to enable that reduced warning time for the opponent. Alternatively, the Chinese could opt to have the Type 095 fire their weapons at maximum ranges. This would have the advantage of increasing the survivability of the Type 095s to the follow-up anti-submarine retaliation by US forces, but also the disadvantage of giving the defender on Guam longer warning time. There's a trade-off here. Submarine-based weapons can be deployed much closer to the target in a manner that the enemy cannot easily detect, and in turn enabling multi-axis first wave attacks. Of course, the Type 095's missiles are complementary to the broader land-based missile attacks from the Chinese mainland. By the way, if you enjoyed our video so far, please press the like button. Another key way the Type 095 can be used is for disrupting the opposing forces logistics and line of communications. As a nuclear-powered submarine, the Type 095 will by nature have extremely long operational range and sustained endurance, limited only by the food supplies carried on board for the crew and by the capacity for ammunition. The boat will not require refueling on a regular basis. This means the Type 095 can be deployed to the Eastern Pacific to harass US reinforcements and supply lines. They can strike supply convoys, oil tankers, troop transports, and pick off long warships. The powerful sonars on the Type 095 will allow detection of noisy supply ships inside a huge radius, and just a small number of escort warships would not be enough to deter a modern guided missile submarine, especially if the escorts do not have facilities for anti-submarine helicopters. To put even a single SSN or SSGN between Hawaii and the US mainland would put a major strain on US logistics and planning. US planners would need to invest major resources to ensure the single opposing submarine does not pick off any vulnerable supply ship in transit to the Western Pacific. Particular attention will need to be paid to the choke points around Panama Canal. The PLAN may well operate several Type 095s in the Eastern Pacific to play the role of logistics interdiction. The US Navy, for their part, is well aware of the problem. The US Naval War College has written several articles over the past 50 years regarding how Soviet and Russian SSNs can seriously impede the flow of supplies across the Atlantic during any wartime scenario. The same principle applies here to the Pacific, except the area involved and to be defended is even larger. The stomping ground for the Type 095 is obviously the open ocean beyond the first island chain, where the water is deep and suitable for a large nuclear submarine. However, the Type 095 is expected, at least by some people, to have an X-tail configuration of diving planes and rudders. This will increase the boat's maneuverability in shallow waters, and may allow it to operate close to the seabed. Consequently, the Type 095 could be employed in the deeper parts of the first island chain, for example in large portions of the South China Sea, and possibly the Yellow Sea as well. 
There they can monitor the movements of nearby naval assets of the opponent and watch out for potential naval incursions into the First Island Chain. Operations inside the First Island Chain means the submarines should be well protected against aerial threats by Chinese fighters and land-based SAM systems. They should be able to conduct missions without being threatened by anti-submarine helicopters and maritime patrol aircraft. That said, deployments inside the very shallow waters of the Taiwan Strait is most likely out of the question. Another key mission for the Type 095 is to participate in Chinese carrier strike groups. As the most capable Chinese nuclear attack submarine when it finally gets commissioned, the class will be a core part of the escort for the Type 003 Fujian aircraft carrier. They will be deployed ahead of the main force as a stealthy picket force. They may well be the first to come into contact with the opponent, and when they do so, they will use their stealth to survive until support arrives. A surface warship in the same role will be much more vulnerable. The Type 095 will try to detect and destroy enemy submarines who may try to attack the carrier group. Hostile submarines may try to descend to a deeper layer of the ocean to try to stay hidden from the surface warship of the carrier force. True, the escort's warships will tend to have a variable depth sonar, which in theory can be lowered to detect submarines in the thermocline. But still, a variable depth sonar will be nowhere near as powerful as the sonar arrays on a modern submarine. In contrast, the 095 can dive to that same layer of the ocean, find the hostile sub using its large conformal sonar and towed array sonar, and destroy the hostile target. A friendly submarine is actually one of the best assets to go after opposing subs, and are pretty much indispensable in a carrier force. That said, anti-submarine warfare may become less and less of a primary role for attack submarines going forward. A submarine can of course hunt another submarine, but the reason this can happen is that subs tend to be louder than the ocean background noise, and therefore submarines can detect and identify each other despite the background noise. During the Cold War, or should I say for most of the Cold War, American submarines had much better noise reduction technology and more powerful sonar systems compared to their Soviet counterparts. American subs were substantially quieter and had superior detection capability compared to Russian subs. As a result, submarines were employed by the US Navy to track Soviet subs and were prepared to hunt down their Soviet counterparts if war breaks out. However, the current world-leading submarine designs, such as the US Virginia class and the Seawolf class, and the Russian Yasin class, have very low noise levels. They are only slightly above the ocean background noise. The next submarine class produced by the major naval powers may well achieve a noise level similar to or even below the ocean background noise, and this includes the Type 095. When that happens, it may be very difficult to detect another submarine using your own passive sonars, and of course, you still don't want to be using your active sonar very much at all because that will expose yourself to detection. So, in the future, world-leading submarines may be unable to detect each other in a practical sense, unless the distance involved is very short. This means the Type 095 may be employed more for anti-ship and land attack missions, instead of anti-submarine duties. Earlier in the video, I have mentioned that the Type 095 is under construction, and this is because of new submarine modules we have seen at the Bohai shipyard, 
which produces all of China's nuclear-powered submarines, ranging from attack subs to ballistic missile subs. In November 2022, new satellite images showed new modules of submarine pressure hulls. The remarkable thing about these new modules is that they have a diameter of 12 meters. Submarine modules seen in the past at Bohai only had a diameter between 9 and 10 meters. These are used for constructing the Type 093 and 094 submarines. The new modules with a 12 meter diameter therefore points to the construction of a new submarine class. The prevailing rumor is that the Type 095 will have a 12 meter diameter with a single hull design. So the new 12 meter submarine sections we have seen closely match the alleged dimension of the Type 095, suggesting the class is being built right now. The Type 095 will be a key component of Chinese naval modernization over the next decade. It will be a while before we see the first units of the class, and even longer before any information on its capabilities can be confirmed. Still, the expansion of the Bohai submarine yard in recent years suggests the class will be built in large numbers. This video explained why the Type 095 is so important to Chinese naval strategy in the events of war in the Western Pacific. They are one of the few assets that can bypass the strong defenses of the First Island Chain and strike directly at the main U.S. bastion of Guam. They can also play a key role in disrupting American supply lines and reinforcements from coming into the Western Pacific. They will be a key part of the escorts for Chinese aircraft carriers. The Type 095 and China's nuclear submarine program are certainly a decisive element of the Chinese naval expansion. If you want to see informed speculation on the technical features of the Type 095 submarine, please watch this video right here.